good, yo? It's your boy Tom back here with another video. In this video today, we are going to be going over the top 10 small forwards in NBA 2K21. Now, this list is both current gen and next gen. So let's say I have somebody ranked at five. They would be maybe number seven on next gen, but number three on current gen. So I met in the middle at number five. Now, after each of these players, I'm going to go over why I, you know, put them in that specific position. But before we go any further, if you are new to my channel, please smash that subscribe button as we are closing in on 40,000 subscribers. The support recently has just been absolutely crazy. And I can't thank you guys enough. Really upload my team content every single day. So if that's something you guys are interested in, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Starting at number 10, I got a tie between two reward players. The first one being Pink Diamond, Andre Iguodala. When you look at this card here, six foot six, six eleven wingspan, ten Hall of Fame badges, twenty three on gold, hot spots from four to five place around the arc. The only real downfall I see with Iggy is the fact that he can't get range extender. Everything else about this card is absolutely elite. I love his speed, lateral quickness, driving dunk, three ball. Everything is good. Now, his release time, it is Iggy's on quick, but it's just the fact that he doesn't have range extender definitely hurts him. But I do love, like his Hall of Fame showtime. And honestly, when I get him on my account, I might test him out. I might test out playing him over the Eddie Jones type of card and just see how I like Iggy Dollar. Now, to go along with him, tied at my last spot, we do have Pink Diamond Dr. J. I couldn't decide who do I who I liked more between these two, and so I ended up putting them both. Now, fully badged out Dr. J gives you a little bit more as far as, you know, he can get range extender. The hot spots aren't quite as good. He does have Hall of Fame Showtime. Defensively isn't quite as good. Has better speed, lower lateral quickness. It's just all a preference-based thing with these two cards. I don't know who I'd prefer, and that's why they're both making my list tied at number 10, because I truly don't know who I prefer between Dr. J and Andre Iguodala. Coming in at number nine, we do have another reward guy in pink and diamond, George Gervin. Now, a lot of you guys might be higher on George Gervin than I personally am, but there's some big down downsides to this card. Six, seven, six, ten wingspan. But some of the downsides that I'm going to talk about, first of all, no hot spot from the top of the key or left hash, which is a downfall considering his three ball. It's an 86, but when I play against George Gervin, I will say I'm not really nervous about people shooting the ball with him that much. 12 Hall of Fame badges, 25 on gold. Does have Hall of Fame showtime, but as you guys can see, no showtime dunk, so not really worried about that. Uh, good driving dunk, good speed ball, great speed, great lateral quickness. It's just, here's the thing. Until they give George Gervin showtime dunks, he doesn't do anything to put him over the edge. He has two Hall of Fame badges that aren't finishing, so... I mean, if you like finishing badges, I mean, he's there for you. I guess it's it's there. But the, the thing about him is he's missing quite a bit. He doesn't even come with interceptor, pickpocket, uh, rim protector he doesn't have. That's another badge I wish he might have. You got handles for days in here, space creator. You got badges like, you know, a flex for release, hot zone hunter. So he's not a complete player as he comes. Now, when he's fully badged, trust me, he's very, very nice. But again, until he gets showtime dunks, I think that limits how good he can be. His defensive tendencies are absolutely terrible. But I do like his player model. Like his player model is not bad. Uh, 95 driving dunk tendency, jump shot 40, a very good release. Just absolutely awful dribble six as well. So there's a lot to like about George Gervin, but again, he is not he is by no means a complete player. Coming in at number eight for me, I might be a little biased, but I absolutely love this Diamond Glenn Robinson card. Again, I think he's one of the most underrated players in the game. And even when you compare him to George Gervin, a badge out Glenn Robinson, in my opinion, is more complete. Six foot seven, 225 pounds, 89 three ball. He has the Zion release. 93 driving dunk with my with my coach. 86 ball handle defensively. He's not that great, but he's not terrible. He's gonna at least hold his own. And in my opinion, he gives you more on the offensive end than Gervin. Now, similar to George Gervin, neither of them have Showtime dunks. Uh, so you gotta know that going into it. Obviously, Glenn does have a Hall of Fame catch and shoot corner specialist, acrobat, relentless, contact, fancy, and giant slayer. But the big thing is, look at the rest of his badges. Defensively, he's pretty complete. Has basically every shooting badge you could possibly want. Silver Intimidator and Clutch Shooter as well. Now, obviously, my Glenn Robinson is pretty badged up when you look through it he's just missing a couple of these that could uh, be upgraded but through and through I like personally Glenn Robinson one step ahead of George Gervin currently in my squad I still run Glenn it's hard for me not to put him uh eighth or higher on my list Coming in at number seven is another kind of player that isn't talked about that much in Diamond Scottie Pippen. Now the thing about Scottie Pippen compared to uh, a lot of the guys we see is he needs badges and not the cheap ones. So when you're looking at Scottie Pippen, the first thing I'm gonna show you guys are his upgradable badges. So the badges he doesn't have, right? Volume shooter, Tyler shooter, none of those matter. It doesn't come with steady shooter, but he needs range extender. He needs hot zone hunter. He needs flexible 
Those badges alone are not cheap. Pickpocket's another one he needs. So you're going to spend 200k just badging, about, uh, badging Scotty up alone. But just on his base card here, 87 3 ball, 85 driving duck, 86 ball handle, 86 steel, 80 or 95 perimeter, 82 interior defense. I wish Scotty was just that little bit faster. 89 speed, 95 lateral quickness. Tendency wise, driving duck tendency is 100. Couldn't ask for more. Then you hop on down to the defensive tendencies, which are very, very elite as well. Like I said, badge wise, defensively is complete. Hall of Fame clamps hard. Crusher, Off Ball Pest, Tyler Spender, Trapper, as well as Hall of Fame Quick First Step. 24 Gold Badges, Catches You Corner, Specialist, Acrobat, Relentless, Finisher, Lob City, Finisher, Passer, Dimer, Pick Dodger, Chase Down Artist, Interceptor, Intimidator. Very, very complete. Now, what I would say, the one thing I like about Scotty Pippen is the fact that he does have hot spots from everywhere behind the arc. That is very, very important. And he, I mean, he honestly might have hot spots from everywhere on the court. I don't know exactly. I haven't used Scotty Pippen enough. But I know that a fully badged out Scottie Pippen is so, so tough. It's just he's rare to find that already badged out. Like, he really, really is. It's, it's going to be hard for you guys to find a Scottie Pippen that's all the way badged out with Flexible, Hot Zone Hunter, all those badges. Now, if you can find one fully badged, for eight to for a hundred k even it's not a bad it's not a bad price at all if you can find one with range extender all those badges that he desperately needs but it's just so so rare to do so and that's why i can't put him any higher if i've not even used a fully badged scotty coming in at number six for me is a guy that i think is a one of the best players on next gen in ping diamond Giannis antetokounmpo now if you're if we're just specifically talking next gen that's it not current gen just next gen specifically I think this Giannis Antetokounmpo card is top notch because height matters more than anything on next gen, especially for player speed. 6'11", 242 pounds. His base card has a 71 three ball, 95 driving duck, 86 ball handle. Defensively, very, very complete. 93 speed, 87 speed with ball, 85 lateral quidditch. Look at the tendencies. Driving duck tendency is a 95. Hopping on down to the defensive tendencies, which are decent enough as well. Now, we're going to get a better Giannis in the... Pretty soon, I have a feeling, but this Giannis can still hold it down. Hall of Fame Acrobat, Relentless, Pogo, Consistent Contact, Fancy Footwork, Pro Touch, Slithery, Downhill, and Floor Journal. Look at the Gold Badges, Rim Protector, Clamps, Intimidator, Rebound, Chaser, Tiles, Fender, Showtime, Quick First Step. All these Silver Badges, then all these Bronze Badges. So, yes, it does cost a ton to badge Giannis up, but most of the Giannis you find on the auction house, you can find him badge. Like, these right here are fully badged Giannis's, basically. Uh, and so, you can get these for a decent price, to be completely honest with you. And I'm telling you, on next gen specifically this Giannis you're going to notice him be incredible on next gen more than current gen current gen his shot isn't as consistent he's not quite as fast uh compared to the other other players that, that he plays with and so it's hard to put him any higher on because of current gen I'm just not comfortable with the card but on next gen let me tell you this card is an absolute problem coming in at number five is a card that I personally am not high on but that doesn't mean anything just because i'm personally not that high on the card doesn't mean realistically he's not good one step above Giannis, i do have pink diamond kevin durant because i think he's a little more versatile current gen next gen than the the Giannis card i'm more comfortable with kevin durant on current gen well i do think Giannis has that slight edge on next gen but looking at kevin durant here 610 240 pounds base card 93 three ball 85 driving dunk 86 ball handle perimeter defense is at an 89 which is very very solid the one thing i will say is he's not very good on the interior. So if you want to play him at the power forward, you might struggle a little bit. 90 speed, 87 speed ball, as well as an 89 lateral quickness. Definitely play him at the small forward position. 95 driving dunk tendency, hopping on down to the defensive tendencies, which are decent enough. They're not great, but they're not terrible as well. You can make them work. His base guard, nine Hall of Famers, relentless contact, slithery, clutch shooter, flex release, green machine, hot start, tile shooter, and volume shooter. 13 goals, catch and shoot, heart crusher, intimidator, quick first step, hot zone hunter, and range extender has a ton of silver badges as well as bronze badges so similar to Giannis, when you fully uh upgrade a, a kevin durant we'll look at this one right here who's basically fully badged you're gonna notice he's got a ton of hall of fame and gold badges and that's basically all you need he does come with steady shooter i do believe but that's just part of the card on next gen that turns to blinders and part of the reason why i like kevin durant on next gen compared to current gen as well so I will say on current gen, expect this card to shoot some straight arms and, and, and you just, you're just going to have to live with it because he is going to shoot some straight arms for you. He's very usable coming in at number five on my top 10 small forward list. Coming in at number four is another guy who is a lot better 
on next gen compared to current gen. Looking at Pink Diamond Brown here, 6'9", 250 pounds. Comes with an 86 three ball, 90 driving dunk, 83 ball, handled an 80, 93 perimeter defense, 94 speed as well as 93 lateral quickness. Now, the reason I say he's better on next gen compared to current gen, the only real difference is his release, which on next gen is just absolutely knocked down. On current gen, I'm super inconsistent with the 95 driving dunk tendency, hopping on down to the defensive tendencies, which are very, very elite as well. I'm telling you, the moment we get a better LeBron, the moment it's over for everybody. Eight Hall of Fame badges, including Dimer, Fancy Footwork, Facility Finisher. You look at the seven gold badges, Clamps, Fast Break Finisher, Showtime, Quick First Step. Now, the one thing about this LeBron is a lot of his badges aren't upgradable. So you see a lot of these silver badges and they're not upgradable at all. So that hurts the card a little bit. You know, he comes with silver range, bronze, flexible, all these badges that you can't upgrade, which definitely hurts him. The only two that you can upgrade, moving truck's not even upgradable, I don't think. So brick wall and back down punisher. So he's only gonna be able to get nine gold badges, I do believe, unless you, yeah, nine, it looks like. Maybe this one has 12. So you can apply other badges, that's why, because he can get other badges that you do apply to him and that's where you can get the extra gold badges. But it's just hard to say he can be any higher when most of his badges are maxed out at silver. So if you do have this set locked in right here, LeBron more than usable, especially on next gen. Coming in at number three is a guy that I changed my mind on more than anybody else. If I was to record this video three days ago, Cam wouldn't have been in the top five. I'm recording this video today and Cam's in my top three because he's been absolutely knocked down for me lately. 6'8", 208 pounds, 88 three ball, 90 driving duck, 86 ball handle, 87 steel, 88 perimeter defense, 90 speed, 86 speed ball, 90 acceleration. As well as that 88 lateral quickness, tendency wise, 95 driving dunk tendency. And let me tell you, his flashy dunks are there. His showtime is basically every time it goes for a dunk and you hold down on the right stick, it's going to be a showtime dunk. 70 contest shot tendency, the badges are there as well. You look at the total badges, absolutely ridiculous. 47 totals, and I don't even think I've applied that many badges to him. Hall of Fame, catch and shoot, pick dodger, chase down artist, pogo stick, showtime, space creator, stop and go, and tireless shooter. Another reason I like Cam Reddish is his Hall of Fame badges are good. I enjoy these Hall of Fame badges because most of them are solid badges. Even his 35 gold badges are very, very solid as well. You look at the card and basically, obviously the range extender can't be upgraded. You can upgrade Dead Eyes, Clutch here and Lob City Passer, but a fully badged out Cam Reddish is so elite. The one thing he's missing that I wish he had is unpluckable, but other than that, very, very complete. I think mine does have more badge spots that I could put rim protectors, some stuff like that on Cam to make him even better. No doubt about it, he's a top five small forward in my opinion in NBA 2K21. Coming in at number two on my list is the guy I run at the opposite position. So I run Grant Hill at shooting guard and run Cam Reddish at small forward, but they are both top three small forwards in my opinion. At number two, I do have Pink Diamond Grant Hill, 6'8", 225 pounds. I got a three ball shoe on him, get him up to an 86, 96 driving dunk, 89 ball handle. His perimeter defense isn't that great. So he has an 87 perimeter defense, 40 interior defense, which is definitely noticeable. He doesn't get great contests inside. But the thing I like about Grant Hill is his speed and lateral quickness. 95 speed with Dan Tony, it's a 99. Lateral quickness is a 94. You're not going to find a better defender stat-wise, height-wise than Grant Hill. You're just not. And that's why I do like the card. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, he doesn't have Hall of Fame clamps and stuff. But it's fine because of his stats. Stats matter too. 100 driving dunk tendency. Obviously, he does get showtime dunks as well. 78 on ball steal tendency. Good contest and pass interception tendency as well. Nine Hall of Fame badges, corner specialist, acrobat, relentless finisher, contact finisher, fancy footwork, Hall of Fame showtime, so there downhill, as well as quick first step, 39 golds, catch and shoot, does come with diamond, pickpocket, pick dodger, clamps, heart crusher, inter interceptor, intimidator. My Grant Hill is badged out as well. Off ball pass, rebound chaser, post move lockdown, Tyler defender, trapper, pro touch, handles for days. I could go on and on. Basically, I should go over what badges he doesn't have. It's important he has silver unpluckable as well because he doesn't really get plucked at all. And I, I notice it too. Like I'm not worried about him getting getting plucked. He has 49 total badges and is absolutely incredible. The only downside to Grant Hill is his release. Other than that, he is lights out. Coming in as my top shooting guard currently in NBA 2K21 is Pink Diamond Paul George. 6'9". 220 pounds, 91 three ball, 95 driving dunk, 90 ball handle, 90 steel, 94 perimeter defense, 93 speed, and a 94 lateral quickness. So just kind of an upgraded version of Cam Reddish is the best way to describe him. 95 driving dunk tendency, hopping on down to the defensive tendencies, which are pretty elite as well. Now the thing about Paul George is he comes with 40 base badges. A lot of those are Golden Hall of Fame. And the good thing about his badges is they can all be upgraded. Every one of his badges can be upgraded. Now, 
When you're looking at Paul George, there's a couple of things to notice. First of all, he doesn't have unpluckable. That's big, okay? That's big. Something that I honestly like uh, any ball handler type of player to have. But the badges that I personally would apply are mostly the playmaking badges. Everything, everything else is pretty complete. He doesn't need that many badges. The only thing is upgrading the flexible uh, and just upgrading the badges. That's the biggest thing. But when you get a Paul George with upwards of 30 gold badges, he is, in my opinion, the best small forward in the game. Most complete at 6'9", the way he moves basically has identical defensive stats to Grant Hill. Honestly, those are my top 10 or 11 with Dr. J and Iggy being tied at 10 in NBA 2K21 at the small forward position. Comment yours down below. I'm sure I missed out on somebody. It's just tough because these are the top of the top. Remember, your parent comparing the guys to guys at number 10 like Andre Iguodala. So guys like Connie Hawkins probably just didn't quite make the list, but that doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that there's really levels to it. But let me know, as, was I too high on anybody, too low on anybody? Let me know, know down below in the comments, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, and as always, man, I love you guys, and have a blessed day.